Welcome to Ask Adam. In this episode, we're going to talk about one of my favorite subjects, Polaroid cameras. So welcome back to Ask Adam, the YouTube series where I answer your burning questions that you submitted to me through ask.fm forward slash Adam Patrick Murray. You send it over there, I answer the questions, and here we go. So I always get a lot of questions about instant film, obviously because I'm a big instant film fan. Uh, and a couple of the most frequent questions I get is number one, where to start? And number two, where to go after that? So with this video, I hope to answer those questions and let's get right to it. First up, I'm gonna show you where I recommend most people start and that is the Fujifilm Instax Mini 8. Oh, whoops. I don't have mine with me because Lindsay Tater Tot stole it for a trip that she's on. But I'm still gonna talk about it. So here's a little taste of the images it produces. Uh, as you can see, it's very accurate, credit card sized little image, and uh, I love it. it. It's actually super easy to use, only a couple of AA batteries, uh, and you get terrific results, uh, whether you're indoor and outdoor. It comes in a package of 10 that you can get from Amazon for about 70 cents in exposure, which is the cheapest of all the instant film that I shoot. Now Fujifilm is still making these cameras and still making film for it, so it's pretty ubiquitous. Uh, it's, I don't think it's gonna go anywhere anytime soon. The prices should stay pretty steady and I think the quality can only go up from here. So another option by Fujifilm is the Instax double wide film uh, that you can use with cameras like the 210 and the brand new 300. Just like the name implies, it is double the size of the Instax Mini and uh, you can get very, very quality photos at about the same price for film. You just get uh, more of it. So I have a little setup over here that I'm going to take a photo of uh, just to show you how easy it is. It's pretty loud and pretty bulky, compared, especially compared to the Instax Mini, but it's still super fun. And while we wait for it to develop live on camera, uh, I will say that it is actually not good to shake Polaroid film because the developer cracks. Uh, it's, it's a misconception from a long time ago, but one way to get it to develop faster is to actually put a little heat on it, either put it under your armpit or blow on it and develops a little quicker. So as you can see, uh, the, the image pops up pretty quick and uh, it's, it's pretty accurate. The colors and, and the flash on it uh, usually lights things up pretty well. Um, so yeah, it's another good place to start uh, if you're into that kind of stuff. Now if you want to move into something a little fancier, you can start collecting vintage Polaroid cameras like this one. This is one of my favorite ones, the Spirit 600 CL. Now the great thing about this is that you can find these kind of cameras everywhere and they're super cheap and because the battery is stored in the cartridge, it usually means that there's less moving parts and that no matter what, it's probably going to work when you get film for it. So speaking of film, you have two options. You can either get uh, expired Polaroid film, which is very expensive and very hard to find. Um, and also most of the time the images just aren't gonna turn out, but sometimes it is fun to, to gamble with that. Or there's a company out there called Impossible Project that has decided to pick up the mantle where Polaroid left off and to continue making uh, old Polaroid film. So these are a couple examples of those. They, they play around with borders, uh, you know, and, and have fun with the color reproduction. They even have black and white. They even have circle frames. They're, they're really getting crazy over there. The only problem I have with this film is that it takes a long time to develop, which it's not super fun to sit around and wait for it. Uh, but when you do get it, it, it does look pretty unique and artsy. So let's go ahead and take a photo uh, of my little set over here with a pack of expired film I have in here. Line it up and there we go. Once again, it spits out. And as you can see, there was actually a couple problems with this pack. Uh, it's pretty old and the developer didn't come out quite right. It also didn't, uh, didn't smear the whole way. So I couldn't tell from the box, but it looks like these are branded with a company that wanted to have their uh, logo on it. So it kind of ruins a little bit of the fun, but 
like I said, it, it, that might be part of the appeal for most people. And uh, it looks like you can see it just a little bit, something turning out, but it's not always guaranteed. So, it's a risk. Continuing down the vintage path, the next stop is going to be the automatic LAN cameras. Now once again, these are super cheap uh, and you can find them pretty much anywhere. They're re really easy to use and you can get really good quality photos out of them. Fujifilm actually still makes film for these LAN cameras. Uh, this is the color variation right here, but they do make a black and white one. Unfortunately, they discontinued it. This is about a dollar in exposure where the black and white stuff is starting to creep up and it's about two dollars in exposure now. And this stuff is super fun to play with. So let's take a picture of my set over here with this LAN camera and I'll show you why it's super fun. Line it up and actually I have black and white film in here right now. So with this stuff, it doesn't automatically eject, you actually have to pull it out. The fun thing about this film is that it's called peel apart film. While the, the other more traditional Polaroid stuff ejects out and you just uh, see it happen, this stuff you wait for it to expose and it's about time and you peel it off. I have it upside down but you can see that I have the Polaroid picture here uh, and the negative over here. You can actually keep this and scan it in which is super fun, but as you can tell, the quality is awesome. And it doesn't feel like a traditional Polaroid picture, this feels like instant film in a more traditional sense. So if you like me and you want to go crazy far down that Polaroid path, Here's an example of that. This is one of the more professional cameras that Polaroid produced, and it takes that, that same peel apart film, but this, with this one I get a ton of manual controls uh, and it's built like a tank. Here are a couple examples of film that I've taken with my 600 SE. It works very well in the studio, very well outdoors, and I have a ton of control over things like depth of field and once again, I absolutely love this film. It's my, my very, very favorite. So let's take a look at the three examples of the film I took of my little setup over there. Obviously the Instax line and the Mini would show up j just about the same as this would. Very true, very accurate, very crisp. Uh, the Peel Apart film is also very accurate. This one's black and white so we can't tell the color, but the color film is very accurate as well. And the Polaroid one, it did develop. I'm super surprised, but the, the colors are very yellow and kind of uh, smeary. So to recap, I recommend most people start off with the Fujifilm Instax Mini or Wideline, like this one. Uh, mostly because it is very cheap, very easy to find, the quality of the photos is very good, and it is super easy to use. If you want to go down the vintage road, you can find a ton of these cheap Polaroid cameras and grab either some expired film, which eh, I probably don't recommend, or some impossible project film if you've got the money. They definitely have a lot of cool stuff and I'm very glad that they exist. To go further down the classic route and use the type of film that I love, the peel apart film, I definitely recommend picking up a LAN camera. Once again, it's easy to find, very easy and fun to use, and the image quality is superb. Thanks for tuning in and supporting Polaroid Week with me. You can follow my work at facebook.com slash adampatrickmurray, twitter at adampatmurray, or go to my website at adampatrickmurray.com. See you guys later.